Learning to make great games is hard as hell. Learn with us at unfgames.com to make it easier. Learn to create a forest in Unreal Engine 5. If you want to learn how to create a level in Unreal Engine, this is a great place to start. You will learn how to use the landscape tools to quickly create a level. You will also learn how to create a landscape material, how to decorate our environment using mega scans, adding procedural grass and trees to quickly populate your environment with less effort, how to optimize your scene to make it game ready, and finally, we will add collisions so that we have a game ready environment you can play with. Okay, so let's create our project. I'm gonna choose the game tab. And here I'm gonna choose uh, maybe first person, third person. I'm gonna choose third person. I like third person game. So I'm gonna go for it. And I'm gonna call my project here like my first forest, something like that. I'm gonna click create, create and then we're gonna open Unreal. So once Unreal opens, you will see this window. In case if you choose that third person template, you will see this map. If you choose another one, then you will see another map. In case you're new, I will show you how to navigate your way around. This big screen here is the viewport, which is a representation of how your game will look like when you ship it. So how do you navigate here? Well. If you check the mouse here with a right mouse click, you can move around like this. You can rotate. And while holding the right mouse click, press W to move forward, S to move back, A to move left, D to move right. And just like this, you can think of it as like a first person shooter. Okay. So what if you want to go up? Well, you can press E to go up and Q if you want to go down. And just by doing that, uh, by holding the right mouse click, you can basically navigate uh, very easily inside Unreal. This is my preferred method of doing it, but there are also other ways of navigating. For example, you can press the middle mouse click, and while holding it, you can pan around, okay? You can pan around just like this, only in two axes. You can also, click on the left mouse click and if you move it with the left mouse you will see it like it's kind of like a spaceship like you can move around and fly just by holding the left mouse click okay so that's pretty much it so what else you can do in the viewport well you can click on objects here for example this cube and let me press f to focus on this object and while you're doing here if you hold Alt and left click, you will rotate around the object. And if you hold Alt and right mouse click, you can zoom in and out. Okay. So that's basically the navigation. If you want to move objects around, you see that as I click on this, I have a gizmo. This gizmo is exactly what you're seeing here. This is the move, the rotate, and the scale. And this one is the select. And this modes are also selected by Q, W, E, R, which is the easiest way to do it. And this is the way we're going to do it here. So for example, if I want to move this cube, I can either click here or press W and I can just move the handles here when I can move in two directions here, just like that. I can press E to rotate around. Okay. Rotating different axes. I can press R to scale just like this. Okay, and you notice that every time I do this, if I move this, there is some kind of stepping. This is the grid snapping, and by default, it will be enabled by using 10 units. Okay, so if I disable this, you will see that I move my cube very smoothly. Okay, and if I enable this, it will snap to the grid. Now, if you don't see this, it's because the grid is very small. I can put something like 100, and now you will notice when you snap your objects, it will only snap to 100 units, which is the same as centimeters in Unreal. Okay, let's move back to 10. The same can be said around the rotation. If I press E to rotate, you can rotate around like this. You will see that it snaps in 10 degrees increments. You can change this to whatever you want. For example, like five, but you can have something like this. Okay, or you can completely remove this 
and don't have any snapping to rotate freely. Okay, so the same is for the scale. You can scale like this, or you can remove this and use scale very freely to have any size you want. All right. So what else you can do in the viewport? Well, you have these different modes here. Okay, I won't go into all of them, but I will show you the most important ones. For example, you're here viewing in the lead mode. Okay, the lead mode is basically your final representation of how your scene looks like. You can change to unlit, you can change to wireframe, or detail lining, or lining only. Okay, those are the most common ones. This is why they have some hotkeys like Alt 4, Alt 3, Alt 2. And I, I will continue to toggle between those during the tutorial so we can check different things such as the color or maybe the wireframe or maybe we only want to check the lining. This is the way we do it. The next one is, of course, the perspective. Okay, by default, it's in perspective and I'm going to leave it like that. But if you want, you can go to top. You can zoom out with the mouse scroll wheel and you will see that everything turns into wireframe. And you can actually put lead here and it will work to some extent, but it's not exactly pretty. Okay, so I will leave it to wireframe. Okay. Okay, the next thing is the viewport options. I'm going to leave it like that. Just make sure uh, if your computer is a little bit slow, turn off real time. So like if things move around like the sun or the whatever it is that is moving uh, turn off real time and it will increase your frames okay and next is the layouts you have like different layouts for example um, you can have like uh, only one plane or you can have like this and you will see that I have like different layouts here let me put four by four and if you click on this you will see that i have i have this button here which is like a window if i click on this it will maximize the window and if i just move around i can just move into different axes okay just in case uh if you come from 3ds max or something like that you want to be more precise you can do that however we will keep ourselves in perspective mode the next thing is the outliner the outliner help us to visualize the actors that are in the scene. Okay, so you can basically rename things. For example, this cube. Let's call this my little cube. Okay, and now when I search here little, you will see that I will find it easier. Okay, in case you have a lot of objects and you want to find one in particular, that can be a good case. But in any case you can either select here or select the outliner and when you select you will see that you have a bunch of properties in the right if you don't see this maybe it's because your word settings are here make sure you click here on the details or press f4 check the details so if you want to move around the windows just click here and this will expand the window so here in the location um, you can either move here and it will move in the X axis. As I move the object, you can see that the location is actually updating here. You, the same can be said for the X axis, the Y axis, or where you move around all the axes. Okay, so you can either type a number here, for example, like 500. And if you don't find it, you can press F to find your object and I'll click to rotate. The next one is the rotation, okay? So basically you can change things here or you can change things here. Depends on what you want. Okay. And the next thing are a bunch of properties, like for example, the static mesh, which is the 3D asset that you're viewing. In this case, it's a cube. Okay. And other things like the materials, like it's like the painting that we have here. If we want to apply another material, we just need to swap this material. Then there are a bunch of properties that we won't touch. In this tutorial for for now this is enough for you to navigate in unreal editor okay so uh, 
if you're not new to Unreal, I hope you have skipped this part. Um, if you're new, I hope it this is useful. Now that we have this, um, one more thing I want to show you is the content browser. Let me close all this so I don't um, uh, I don't confuse you. I can check the assets I have in my project by pressing Control Space, and this will open up the content browser. And it is basically a folder structure where you can organize all the assets that you have. So I can either press Control Space or click here, or I can go to Window and then go to Content Browser. And you, you see that I have a bunch of content browsers here. That's because you can have many. And as soon as I click on this, you will see that I have different tabs here. Okay, so I can, for example, I can right click here and create a new folder called my my forest, something like that. Okay, and let's create a new level. Let's go here, new level, and let's create an empty level. We don't want to create an empty open world. Okay, just an empty level. And let's, let's click create. Uh, let's not save this. And just like this, we have our new map. Control S to save this. Okay, and let's call this in my forest. Uh, let's just call level 01. And now we're good to go. So now that we have our level, it's time to put some lights because it's extremely dark and we cannot see anything. And there are many ways we can place lights. And for example, we can go here to the green plus icon, which is our add objects. And we can put a light here like a... I don't know, like a point light. And I still we don't see anything because there's nothing to light. So there is a better way to do this. And that is going to window. And then going here to the environment light mixer. And when you have here, and if you check your outliner, if I, I can create a skylight. And you can see that it creates a skylight. And this is the same and just going to basics. Uh, and then dragging skylight here. Okay, I'm gonna undo with Control C. It's the same. So we can create atmospheric like zero. We can create a sky atmosphere to have something in the background. We could create volumetric clouds, yeah. And we can create a height fog. And there you go. Now we have something that looks nicer than a, you know, a black canvas. So. A couple of things I want to change here. Make sure your skylight is set to real-time capture. Okay, that's one thing. And that's it. That's it for now. Uh, your exponential height fog, you can put it into volumetric fog if you want. Uh, we're going to leave it like that for now. So the first thing, uh, we want to create our forest. So what we will do is to go to the select mode. And let me say first with Control S. Okay, go to the select mode, go to landscape, and here you will see that you can create like a green grid, super big. This is essentially the gameplay area we're going to have, like the player can run around here and you can make it really big. For example, I can increase the quad size to, uh, I don't know, 127, and this will increase like the size of the quads here. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that, and I'm going to put a two by two sections per component, so I, I can have more resolution. And just like that, uh, we're not gonna enable edit layers, we don't need it for now, we're just gonna hit create. And now we have our landscape. So if we press here, you can see that I have my shortcuts here, I can press shift one or select, and I can right click and play from here, and you will see that I have my player here. That's great. So what I want to do is to create like a hill here. So I can just go to landscape and I can go to the sculpting mode here. And here I have a bunch of options. Like I can change the brush size. I can change the tool strength. So the sculpt mode, I can just click here and you will see that it will start sculpting just like that. Okay. I can also reduce the strength so I can have more fine detail. Okay. I can reduce the brush size or the fall off. But uh, if you want to make this one down, press uh, shift and it will like do the opposite way. So instead of adding, it will subtract. 
you can also go to smooth to smooth this area just like this okay so what i like to do is just go here to my sculpting tools the smooth a little bit but the smooth yeah not so harsh like just a little bit like this and i can just keep doing that and i will start with a very big brush like like this something something like that and i want to have a small heel here so i'm gonna smooth this first okay and i'm gonna flatten some area so if i flatten this will make it really like no flat <laughs> okay so i want to have a heel here and i can do that with the ramp so if i go here to the ramp you will see that I have a bunch of options I can change the ramp width. So you don't see it because I haven't clicked on anything. So I can just click here and then just maybe click here. You will see I can, I can move the ramp here just like that. And I can change the ramp width and I can even make it bigger, I believe. Yeah, something like that. And if you're happy with it, just press enter and you will have a ramp. Okay, so... Uh, what I'm going to do is to create a very big ramp, something like that, and I'm going to press enter. Okay, awesome. So now I have like a small little hill here. Okay, and let's go back with shift one and let's play our game to check how it feels like. Okay, so uh, I feel like it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to go to my landscape and this time I'm going to put the ramp here and I'm going to do a ramp like this. Not too much. Something like that. Okay. So now let's play from here. Chief one. Okay, so we can we could start from here. That's great. So now what I can do is go here to my landscape or either press shift two and smooth these parts a little bit so I can have something here. What I can also do is go to the flatten tool and then go here and just flatten this area so I can have like a small little hill here. And I can do the same here, like I can create something that, you know, move from distance and I can do another ramp here, for example, uh, I click enter. Okay, and I can just go to smooth here and let's smooth this area. Okay, something like that. Awesome. It's like you can have some little small heels here to play with. And this feels much better, in my opinion, compared to just a flat plane. So what I will do is to create maybe another ramp here. I can just go down and press enter. And you will see that I have like, I can even go uh, deeper. It doesn't matter uh, how, uh, if I'm like in the minimum level here I can just go below and it will work just fine so I can just smooth this area here awesome what I can also do is add some erosion here if I go to erosion uh, I can change the tool strength and the threshold I can make it really small so that when I click here you will see that I have like some kind of erosion so let's make the tool strength really low and the threshold like a little bit like this and you will see that just by doing this, you have like a small little, um, it's like kind of like erosion. It looks a little bit better than just the, uh, the sculpting tools here. Like, for example, you can have something like this and you can erode this part just like that. Okay, let's can do it like this, for example. It's something really nice to, to have. Personally, I like it a lot. Um, it adds a lot of flavor to your scene. You can just keep sculpting. Feel free to play with this. And don't forget to test your game. So when you come here, let's for example, you're here, and let's go to Shift 1. And you wanna play from here, right click and play from here. So you can just test your level. And it looks bigger than what we actually thought. And because we're watching everything from this view, we think like, everything is small but in reality if we play from here you will see that we actually have a very big level okay uh, another thing i can do is go to my landscape and then i can go to copy okay for example i can select all this sorry select like this and then go to copy copy data to gizmo Okay, and you will see that I have my data here. Okay, and I can move it around just like this. Now, uh, 
sorry, I shouldn't select this clear region. Copy, and you will see like a box here. Let's grab this area by making it bigger, just like this. Okay. Let's just select all of this, just like that. Okay. There you go. Let's make it bigger to make sure we have everything. Great. Now that we have this, copy data to Gizmo. And now what we can do is come here and we can actually put it here, for example. Press Enter. Uh, sorry, Control V. And this will paste. Okay. And now we have something like this. Okay. And then you can just smooth things out here or just do the erosion so you don't have exactly the same like copy over over and over you can do the same here and you can see that i can easily create any landscape one last thing before moving on to adding some materials to this is that i want to put my player into one position for example i can start from here okay so if i'm gonna choose this place what i can do is go here and then go to my player start and then drag it here and just like this now you see that my character is pointing into another direction press escape to uh, stop the simulation you can rotate like this 180 degrees and now we will start from here and that's great and now we have a small level we can play with in just a matter of minutes uh, we can have something uh, to move around and play with, which is awesome. I really love when this kind of stuff uh, works together and we can play our game. So now what we're going to do is to add some colors into this. Let's add some grass, some rocks and other stuff to make it look prettier. So let's add some materials into this. So I'm going to use Quixel Mega Scans and you can acquire them by going to the content browser here then click on add and then add quixel content and if it's the first time you use this well you need to log in here i already log in so you can choose any asset you want for example you can type grass and you will have a bunch of options you can either download 3d assets 3d plants surfaces which is the ones we're gonna download are decals to add more details to your level so like if you want to add more assets for example like this one you can just choose the quality you want for example medium quality is the one i'm gonna use it's like 2k texture so you can do, go to the highest quality but i think it's too much for games uh for now we just go to, for the medium quality and just click on download and you will see that it starts to download here and once it's finished you will be able to click the plus icon here to add it into your project now I already have some uh, textures I want to use. So if I go here to this desktop item, this is my local folder. You will see that I have a bunch of materials that I already download. Okay. So what I want to do is basically put some grass. So for example, this one, this forest floor. Let me grab this here. Okay. And you will see that it will create a folder here called Megascans. And it will put the surfaces here. And in this case, it will rename it to the name of this material, which is the flo forest floor. Okay. And it will have a bunch of textures and the material and everything. We will use it later. But for now, let's see what else we can add. So we have this ground stone. I believe it can be very useful. So let's add this. Okay. Let's add another one. This one, for example. Okay. Sorry, let's just move this one here. Then let's see this one. Uh, maybe we may want to add something like this. Uh, so let's click on add. Okay, so we have the forest floor. We have this one and the rock. Um, I think we're good to go. So now that we have this, we just need to create our material. So let's go to the content browser. And now we will go to our my forest and i'm gonna create a material here right click material and i will call it m landscape uh i don't know forest okay so i just double click on this and if 
you want to learn more about the material editor we have complete tutorials about it uh, if you, you want to create complex materials and everything we're gonna keep it simple uh, for now if it's your first time you just need to know that you can move around here with the right mouse click okay here you have a viewport which is the representation of how your material will look and here you have a bunch of properties okay now what i want to add is these textures into my material so what i'm gonna do is to just drag all of those okay and just put them here awesome and now what i can do is to plug this in to check how it looks like okay so let's grab the base color here let's grab the normal map okay and this is the mask so basically this is the color okay and you see that it's actually changing this is the normal map if i double click on this you will see that i have my texture here okay so this is what will give detail to my texture if i undo this you will see that it's like a photo okay it doesn't have any depth so let me connect this to the normal map and then this one's here if i double click on the mask uh, what is a mask exactly? It's a grayscale texture packed into different channels. If I click on this, you will see that I'm able to check the channels. If I check the red one, you will see that I have my ambient occlusion. The green one, we have the roughness. And the blue one will have the height. So combining to all of this tree, we have something like this that doesn't make any sense. But for us, we know that the red one is the ambient occlusion. So we're going to put it here. And the green one, we're going to put it into the roughness. And just like that, we can just hit apply here. And when we go here, we, we can just, you know, drag the, drag the material. So let's go to my forest. Click here. And with this selected, you can also press control space and you can go to my forest. With this one selected, you can either drag and put it here. Or you can just select this one. And by clicking on this arrow, you can just assign it. And just like that, you will see that I can see my textures here. Okay, so right click right from here. And you see that they are very small. That's one thing. And I only have one. So we need to add more control into our texture. So the next thing we're going to do is to blend between different materials. So we can, um, you know, play with our landscape. So we're gonna do that next. So how do we add materials? Well, we need if we go to our landscape, you will see that I have a paint tab here. And you will see that in this part you have layers. And here you will have like the the grass, the rocks, uh, the ground, and all the materials you wanna put, it will be here. So we can choose and then paint here with, with whichever material we're choosing. So we need a way to tell Unreal that this material has some layers. So how are we going to do this is by using the landscape layer blend. So if we come here, we can right click and type landscape layer blend. Okay. And this is exactly what you're looking for. This is the layers. I'm sorry. If I create this too fast, you can use right click or press tab and type landscape layer blend. Okay. Um, so, um, if you want to add layers, you can just add one. And here you will have a bunch of options. Uh, I will just rename this to L1, just like this. And you need to do the same for each one of those. So I can just come here and paste it here and then copy and do the same. Um, I really don't want to do that. So what we will do instead is to combine the entire material. Let me control C here. So let me alt click. And what we will do is to right click and type make material attributes. And with this, now we have a material. We can put this one here. We can put this one here. This one in the ambient occlusion, this one in the roughness. And now we can just connect this one here. Now, how do we connect this? Or we can do the break material attributes and then we can connect all of them again. Um, but, you know, 
there is a better way. Let me undo this. And what we can do is go here to material attributes. If you click here, you will see the properties of the material. You can click here, use material attributes. And there you go. Now you can just connect this one here. Awesome. So let's apply this. And now you will see that everything turned black. But now I have my layer here. If you don't see this, you need to go to open a new level and then reopen the level again. Sometimes it happens, okay? So now that you have this, you can create a new layer because there is no information here. So what we can do is to click the plus icon, click on weight blended layer, click here to save, and there you go. Now we have our grass here, okay? So that's the first layer. Let's add other layers. So what I will do first is make sure these textures are from here in the texture asset shared wrap. This is very important. I see so many comments with people who cannot paint more textures. The reason is they haven't changed the texture to shared wrap. If you check here, you have two out of 16 samples. You cannot put infinite textures here. So by doing this, you will be able to put more than 16, okay? And we only have three for one material. So let's add other surfaces. We add this one. Let's add this floor, okay? Let's drag this, okay? And just like this, we can just come here. There you go. Control C, Control B. I'm just going to move this one here. Okay, and let's connect this one. Connect the ambient occlusion with the green one. And now for the lens landscape layer blend, uh, we can add another layer here. Okay. And we will call it L2. And we will just connect this one here. Remember, make sure to put shared wrap. Okay. Hit apply. And now you will see that I have a second layer. Let's create a layer info for this one. Save everything. And now when I paint here, let me reduce the size of my paint and increase the intensity. When I paint here, uh, sorry, you need to click on this one. When I paint here, you will be able to paint the other material. If I can just paint here something like this, like a small little path. <laughs> All right, awesome. And if I want to remove it, I can just shift click. Now the blending is a little bit funny, but you are getting somewhere, okay? So uh, now that we have this, we can just continue to add more materials. Let's add the ground stone. So let's grab this one here. Materials can be a really tedious process, but it's really simple, actually. It's just a little bit maybe boring. Okay, so grab all of them, shared wrap, control C, control B, and then connect all of those here to the normal map, ambient occlusion, roughness. And you'll see that it's getting a little bit messy here, like with all these wires. So what I will do is to create a rewrote name node. If I type here, I type name, you will see that you have the option to add name rewrote declaration node. And what this will do is to create a node, I will call it L1. And now, instead of connecting this, I can just type L1 here. And this will be the same as I connect this one to here. Okay, so I can do the same one here. I can type name, type L2, do the same one here, type name type L3, and now I can just come here, L2, connect this one, add another layer, call it L3, connect L3 here, and this is much more organized, okay? So we're going to add the last texture samples here, I'm going to go here, and move it, okay, make sure everything is shared wrapped. I can't emphasize enough how important this is. Otherwise, you won't be able to paint more textures. 
So let's go here. Control C, Control B, and let's come back here. Go back to the normal map. Ambient occlusion, roughness, and this one will be my name, L4. And now we can just go up and type L4 here. And let's have another layer blend here. And rename it L4. Okay. And now that we have this, let's hit apply. And now we can go to our level, go to the landscape. And let's save everything. Okay. Now if you save everything, you will see it here. Click plus. Save. Do the same with this one. Save everything. So now you can just paint here, for example, here. Let's decrease the size, okay? So we can just paint here and have like small pebbles here. And you can also have like this part here, which is like more rocky, okay? Okay, awesome. So now we can paint our landscape but it's not exactly pretty. So we need to make some adjustments to our material and we're gonna do that next. So time to improve this texture. So how are we gonna do it is we're going to our landscape and the first thing we will need to do is to change the tiling. So we're gonna do this by pressing U or you can also type texture coordinates. Okay, and then M for multiply and one to create a constant you're wondering you can just type constant here or multiply okay these are just typical shortcuts you use in materials now you can just connect these ones and now we can just connect all this now we want to have control over which texture we are changing the tiling so here we can just right click convert to parameter and let's just say um l1 tiling L1 tile. So we can just change it to 0 0.05 maybe. Okay. And we can do the same here. We can just control C and control V, or we can just connect to the three of those. And then rename this one as L2. Okay. And by having these parameters, we will be able to change it later. So I can just type L3 tile. Control C, Control B, type L4 tile, and I can just put it here. And that's it. Now, you will see that our landscape will change in terms of size, but this is still a little bit too, too big for me, uh, personally. So, uh, what we will do is to create a material instance. Let's go to my forest. Save everything, right click in the material, create material instance, and we will call it MI uh, Landscape Forest. And now that we have this, we can just Shift 1 to select our landscape and click here. Now, this will change the material, but nothing else will change, okay? So, what happens now is that if I double click on this, you will see that I have a material instance editor which this means we have control over the parameters. So if we feel this one is too big, we can change this one to 0 0.1 or 0 0.05. Uh, let's check the L2, 0 0.1 or 0 0.08. Okay, so 0 0.08 looks like a nice number. Let's play from here. Not bad. Let's put 0 0.08 to everything. 0 0.08, 0 0.08. Okay, so now that we have this, um, let's see if this is big enough or small. Uh, a little bit too big, to be honest. So let's put 0 0.001, uh, 0 0.08. We can divide by 2 to make it bigger or multiply by 2, and that's it. 0 0.16 looks like a decent number to use. So let's put the same ones here, Control C and Control B. And that's it. Great. This is what we want. Okay. 
So let me put zero point zero eight here. Uh, it's okay. So now that we have this, uh, looks like this one hasn't changed uh, for some reason here. Ah, uh, there you go. It's okay. So, uh, if you if you paint your material, it will look very soft. So if, if we go to the landscape and paint here, for example, I want to paint some roads here. We can just go here and just paint. You see that I have this smooth transition here, which I don't really like. Okay. So what we can do is to change this transition by using the height map. So how can we do this we can just come here and then grab this one and type cheap cheap contrast and then we will name create a parameter by holding one right click convert to parameter and we will call this um height contrast and we will put something like four okay so if we put something like this and if you want to take a look at how it looks like if you can right click start previewing node and you will see that I have black areas, um, gray areas, which is what we want. Okay. If we only have like one, you will see that I have like this smooth transition. Okay. And if I, if I have zero, I don't have even no transition. So I will put something like, um, I will put something like one first. And then how can we add a contrast? Well, we will add something like another height. Okay. So first, um, let's go here to the layer two. The layer one, we won't touch it. Layer two, we will put a height blend. We will do the same for this one and this one. So this one really doesn't need the height map. So I'm just gonna copy and paste here. Okay. And now I will call this name L2 height. I will do the same here. I will just copy all this, paste, control, and then L3 height, control C, control B, paste the blue one, and this one will be my L4 height. Now that we have this, we can just come here, L2 height, and put it here, do the same one here. L3 height and then the L4 L4 height awesome so let's apply this and we will see how it changed our material okay so let's save and now that we have this you see that I have a more, much harsher transition so what I can do is go here and to my height contrast I can, if I put zero, you will see I have like no transition. I can put like four. Okay. And I will have a very, very harsh contrast. I can put one, two, three, I can put 50 if I want. And this will make sure that it looks like this, like very, very contrasty. I can put uh, five. Okay. So let's take a look from this angle, 15. Okay, so 15 looks like a nice number. If I put zero, it looks like this. Five, 10. 10 looks like a really nice number. Awesome. So what we can do? Well, we can start painting here. We can go to the landscape. And here we can paint some layer info here. We can go to the tool string and make it really small. And we can start painting here. And you can see how you can just uh, blend between these assets just by having the height information here it blends much more nicely I can just increase the tool, tool strength I can just create something like this a little bit more like a, a smooth transition here I can also paint here some areas that I want some rocks here for example here and I can start painting here for example I have my height map. I can do the same here. I can just increase the brush size. Okay, and just start painting like this. Okay, and then just do the same here. Just like that. Okay, and I can do the same for this one because we type create a rock. 
you will see that I have like a really nice um, rock texture here we can use here to even increase the let's increase the strength and you can just put it like this for example something like that and we can then go here and we can add more variation just by painting here you won't be able to see the difference just by you know just going here and painting all these things like by adding more materials into your landscape you will be able to just basically create a lot of variations you can just uh, start painting very big here example in this area just like this and also here okay and then you can go here and with a smaller brush you can just start painting here in this area just like this and you can break the tiling here like for example something something like that you can start painting like this okay and you know this is a really really nice process you can you can use to add more variation to your sink and just come here and just by doing that uh, we can paint some greens here we are losing some greens in this area okay and you can remove the size and just by painting you're having like more and more greens here awesome there is one thing I want to change here and that is the specular value here so if I go to my forest I can go here and create break material attributes and this is a quick fix but I can just come here remove use material attributes and what I can do is just put the base color here the roughness the normal and the ambient occlusion here and then for the specular value I can have a value here I can put something like a specular and I, I will leave it at 0 0.5 which is the default like just put something like this hit apply okay and now uh, when I go here you can just the specular put to zero and you will see that everything looks much nicer like it, it doesn't have the reflections that we had before like we put 0 0.5 it has like this smooth everything uh, which we really don't want that so we can put something like 0 0.1 0 0.05 that's too much it, as soon as we put this like it's like nothing has reflections anymore uh, which is what we want I mean these things are not reflective okay so now that we have this we can just go to the landscape and you know just start painting here a little bit and then go back here to uh, change the textures and everything okay and just by doing this we can create a really really nice environment let's just just put something like this and then paint here and then paint in this area just start big and then remove as you continue like you can come here okay and then just paint in this area here let's try to play our game to check how it feels like awesome so we have like a small little uh place where we can run around and we have our textures now this looked really flat and i really don't care much about it because we're gonna add like more rocks and more stuff here to make it look better uh for now i i feel like it's working pretty nicely so let's leave it like this for now and let's add some rocks into our scene so time to add some rocks you may feel like oh my landscape looks really bad and i really need a super super material no you don't you only need to add some assets into your scene because one of the mistakes that people make is that they think that the landscape will solve everything and it, they are very helpful but you also have other tools to use so let's go to the bridge and if you type rock then go to 3d assets you will find a lot of options here i already saved here in my favorites some options that i feel like they can be useful for our case okay so for example if i type rock here 
okay you will see that all my favorites here and i can put 3d assets okay and now i can just choose the rock i want and let's start really big because i have a lot of options right so let's start really big how about let's start with this one okay so what we can do is something happened here uh okay so what we can do is let's go here and this one we're gonna drag it we're not gonna download because it's gonna take a while but we're gonna drag this here and we're gonna put it here awesome and just by doing that we already have some cliff here that's great and there it's very big so what i can do is just play with this rotate around to have something like this for example and i can do the same here to create like different variations here something like that and i can also rotate like this now you see that i drag this and this is super low quality but what's happening in the background is that this is downloading the scene so i can just leave it here and i can actually continue to move this for example like here or i can even drag something else for example i can go here to my bridge and i can grab some other rocks here for example um let's just drag this one here and when we do this it will download the other one which is great so we can just come here and we can just put it in position here let's just say this is the end of our environment so we need you know some fairly big rocks to block it out right so we can just come here and then and just do very big ones in the background too like for example here we can just do something like this and you won't really notice from this distance and if you feel oh this is the same rock don't worry we're gonna add more rocks and you will be able to see it so we can just come here rotate and the idea is to use assets that you can reuse in the future so for example like this one uh it's another type of asset so let's scale this it's like this and we can just put it here okay and it will load and it will take a while but take a look at this one uh, this one is already changing a little bit it will change in the future don't worry so it will just take a while so while adding this we can just come here and add more assets here and just add this one here so you don't notice that this one is like the same you can do the same here for example we can rotate like this and if you want to rotate into the local axis just click here and let's just come back here and we can we can try to put it there okay so let's play our game awesome so now we have more rocks let's try to put some rocks here so let's let's grab this one let's rotate it let's try to put it here something like that okay and you see that this one also has more geometry now it will update in the future do not worry so let's just continue with this we can add another rock here so so that we can close the gameplay space right so try to look for another one okay let's take a look at this one it, i'm not sure if it's finished looks like it's finished but it's not updating for some reason so if we take a look at this control b uh you see that it's not updating i will take a look at the later what's what's going on but for now let's just drag this okay and we can just come here okay like preparing shaders it's doing the job don't worry guys okay we can grab this sharp clip for example and we could put this one in the in the background like we can't scale this like 10 very big 
Okay. And we can just come here and can even put something like 30. Like super big. And you can only see it in the background. Something like that. Yeah, some something like that. And you can do the same here. There you go. Like a very, very big cliff. And it will you see that now we have the nanite version, which is awesome. It just swap it out. And this will change in the future, but for now we can we can just we can just close this area. We can scale this. This is a really, really nice asset. If you take a look at this, um not all the assets will allow you to do this. And I'm not sure if this one will fit our case, but we will just leave it like that for now. Uh, for me, what I want to do is to grab more of this and put it here. Something like that. And we can just put it like this. Okay. So we can have more variation. And we can do the same here. We can just duplicate. And just by doing that, we're adding more variation into our assets, okay? We can copy this, start putting it here. Let's just say this area, it's out of reach for the player. So let's just duplicate this once. You can see how uh, this asset is repeating a lot. So uh, let's try to duplicate as much as we can until we cannot um, we cannot unsee it and we need another asset. So in my case, I feel like um, maybe these rocks will help, but we will put them later. For now, let's just try to put this one, for example. And let's just drag this one here. Okay. And then let's just make it big. Now it's getting a little bit slow because I'm updating all my assets. Let's just put something like 50 or 30. Okay, 30 is a good number. So let's just come here. And we can just blend these assets here. Like just by doing this, we can just put this one here. And we don't need to worry about the scale because we will add more assets in the future. Something like that. Okay, it will change soon. You can see that uh, this one is already updated. The rest will be updated soon as my computer continues to uh, get slow. Okay, something it's updating. I can feel it. I can feel the lag. Okay, there's something updating. And when it becomes slow, it, it means it's swapping up the the models here but oh, that's that's good so the idea is just to play with some assets in that you can put in the in the background first let's start big and then we will add some smaller assets okay and as you can see i add a lot of them and it's replacing a lot so make sure you to select one and then stick to it until you cannot change it uh, any longer okay so if you want to put another asset maybe my recommendation if your internet is not as uh it's not as fast maybe you can wait for the other asset to download okay so uh i'm gonna pause this uh, wait for the assets to finish and then we will continue to decorate this environment okay so my rocks finished downloading uh you can see that if I press Alt 2, you will see that wireframe here. Everything is nice and high density. Okay, so I don't feel like this one is really working, so I will delete it. And what I can do is just go to my bridge and keep playing with this. So, for example, uh, let's add some medium rocks here. We can just come here and rotate this around just like this. And we can let's just put it here, put the rotation to zero okay and one of the bad things about these mega scans is that not all of them come with a you know uh, 
with back faces. Um, it's a little bit annoying to work with, uh, to be honest, because it's very hard to position this. So I will just put this one here. Um, then let's look for another rock. Um, for example, like, um, not this one, but maybe something similar to this. This one is great, by the way. So I mean, we can just grab this one. So let's just grab the mossy rock here that we did. And we can just try to place it here. Okay. So this one has the open face down. So we can just come here. And just by doing this, we will be able to have like a small little rock here we can we can have. Like it's really nice actually. Okay. And these parts do not worry about it. We will add more stuff here. So for example, here we can just come here and just rotate this. Okay, and the player won't be able to reach here, so I don't worry about those things here. You can just come here and rotate. There you go, rotate a little bit. That's it. And I can still uh, put more rocks, for example, like I can put like this massive rock formation. And I think it's going to help a lot. It's very, very, very big. So I'm just going to come here and just put it here in position. And later on, I can just adjust my landscape so I can uh, make sure that my... Let me change the rotation snapping. I don't really want it. Uh, later, I can just change the landscape to make sure like this blends really well. So I can just come here and maybe just put another one here. And if I don't like this, uh, I can either leave the landscape like that, or I can just change it. So let's just put more rocks here. Uh, let's start with this one too. So we can just put this one here. And um, we can just put it like this. And, and then when we are here, we can do the same here and Put it here you saw we have something here to work with okay and this part maybe we need another one we can try this one for example we can drag this okay and just like this we can just come here and just put it in position here there you go. Okay. And this one, we can make it a little bit bigger. This one, I feel it doesn't blend really well. Like, I feel like these ones are really nice. And I want to keep them. So, I will go here. And I will make it, like, super big. Like, 50 or 100, 200. And I will put it really, really, really far. Something like that. And just like this, I can have like a background here. I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to rotate this around. And I can make it like 300 if I want it. And I can rotate this. And for this background, like you don't really need to uh, be very picky. You only want to have something that looks good from distance. And here, for example, like you have the back face. You don't really want that. So... Let's just leave it like that. Okay, and let's keep playing with this one. This one is really nice, actually. We can put it anywhere we want. Just like this. And we can just play with it here. Um, what this asset will do is to help us with the transition with the rocks. So this transition here is really harsh. If you take a look at this, this is not natural. Nobody's Nothing stops like that. So we need to smooth this out like this. And a good way to do this is with this transition meshes here that we have here. You can just come here. And just put them in position here. Just by rotating around. You are having a lot of uh, good transitions you can play with. 
uh, the same with this so you, you can just put it here you don't really want to see the landscape like um you don't really want to see the landscape sculpted this is something for the player to walk uh, so uh be aware of that you can blend this uh, in any way you want uh, but the idea will be to remove as much as you can the landscape because uh, you, you don't really want the player to notice that this is, you know, sculpted I mean, CG, you know. So if we come here, we can just put this one here. And that's the bad thing about the, the assets that are not from, uh, not cover here. So we need, we need a way to just copy this. And this asset I really like because it's closed anywhere, except this part, you know. But, you know, you can always do this, and as long as it's not too much, nobody will notice. Something like that, and you can just come here, and, and you can do the same here. You can copy this asset and put it, like, here. And you can do the same here, and just... block the way basically and we can do the same here so that we have like a um, this will be our main path for example all right let's take a look at where is our player so we're gonna use our outliner outliner go to the player start press f and i feel like here is not a good place to start the game i feel like this is much better in my opinion so let's just start from here. Let's press end. And we can just press here. And now, uh, when we play the game, now it's much better. So we can actually come here if we want it. Uh, we will need to add some rocks here. So what I can do is to basically play with these ones. For example, uh, maybe this one. Or also this massive... Uh, it looks small, but actually it's really big. If you if you take a look at the at the size of things, like you can come here and add even smaller elements because this one is really really big. So you really want to blend it really nicely with other smaller elements. So you can just come here and then come back here and just like this. And if you want to blend in a little bit better, you can just go to the landscape and go to sculpt mode. And sculpt a little bit. It's like this. You can just sculpt here. There you go. And you can smooth things out. You can sculpt again if you don't like it. And also this part, you can sculpt it. Just like that. And you can use the erosion to make it a little bit nicer. To, to strong here, let's remove the strength a little bit. Okay, and do the sculpt again. There you go. And then the smooth. And sculpt. There you go, and now you can paint here, for example, like this material here. It's not blending really well, so we can use this one. And then this one here. And now this blends much better. Of course, it will look better when we have the uh, high resolution version. Uh, for now, uh, we don't have it. It's preparing the meshes. So I can just come here and do the same here. We can put something like this. And with this, we can blo we're blocking the pad. But if we play here, oh. All right, guys. Uh, I will... So after the crash, uh, I put the rocks again, more or less in the same position. Uh, it's not exactly as it was before, but it's close enough. And wherever I encourage in some parts like this, I can just go to my landscape, uh, sculpt a little bit here, like remove, uh, reduce the size, put it like this, and then smooth it out like this. And I can also paint here, for example, like this one. 
to make it blend a little bit better with the with the asset and parts like this i can do the same here i can just cope here i can just add that landscape here and i can just smooth it out and sculpt again if i see some openings okay and smooth again here and then i can just paint here with some colors that are more or less the same as the asset okay so uh it's still really empty but when i play here i you know there is there is some potential here like i have my pad and it's really clear and don't worry about this stream pool we will solve it later uh, for now what i want to do is remove the fuzz material because if i check the unlit mode you'll see that these are very dark and i want to keep it that way and they're getting pretty bright so what i will do is to go here to this material instance then go down open the parent here and you'll see that this material has the fuzz material and I don't really want to do that, so I will just connect this one here. Apply. And just when we do that, now everything is much better, right? So, let's play here. Now, not everything is super shiny, which is great. Now, what I want to add is some grass here. So that our scene can be uh, a little bit more alive because if we play here everything is really flat so grass will help us a lot so the way we're gonna do this uh, let me close this we're gonna open the bridge and here you can just type grass and if, if you go to 3d plans you have a bunch of options here i already have some uh i decided i will get this gra grass clumps here for now, I will only get one, okay? I will add here. And you will see that I have my grass here. If I double click on this, you will see that it's working. It has the LODs and everything. I think it's a really nice asset, okay? And I have a, a bunch of variations I can use, okay? Like this one and this one, okay? So how can I paint here? Because if I drag and drop this here, like, you know, like this, it's gonna take a while to finish the whole landscape so instead we're gonna use the landscape material to paint here so what i'm gonna do is to go here to my forest material okay and before doing that i'm going to create here a grass material so if i go here go to materials uh sorry go to foliage go to landscape grass type click on this and let's call it landscape grass type i don't know uh grass zero one okay so here let's we can add some uh meshes here so we will put a i don't know let's just put a clone here for now okay so <coughs> we will take a look at that later but here what i want to do is to create a grass you no know, landscape grass output okay so here what i will have is the name grass and i will put this one here okay i can also put the landscape layer sample so i can sample which layer so what i will do is to basically go to my landscape and here i will sample i will decide okay i want to sample from this layer or maybe this layer and when I paint here, I will also spawn the grass. So a couple of things we need to do first before connecting this, uh, we need to add another layer and we're gonna do it very easy. We're just gonna come here at layer five, okay? Layer five uh, grass, something like that, okay? And we're gonna put a height blend and instead of creating a new material i'm going to use this one so i'm just going here to my l1 and i can just drag this here i can also go to l1 height which we didn't have so let's create one l1 height we're gonna put it here so what will happen is that we will paint the same material 
like apparently nothing will happen so what i will do here is create a new asset shared asset save everything okay and now when i paint let's no let's let's paint here okay so let's this will be our test area let's paint here there you go now this is our grass so what we can do is to basically spawn this cone and how we're going to do this is first in this grass node we need to specify the grass then we will put l5 grass as the name make sure it's the same one you have here okay l5 grass and then we're going to sample from which layer you want to sample well i want to sample from layer five okay the name is layer five grass okay so it's l5 grass remember you need to get the, the exact name just when we do this now you you can see we have our cons spawn and that's great so what i want to do is to instead of putting these cons i want to put the grass clamp i create so i will just click on this and put it here now there are a bunch of options we can use here and we will take a look at those so let the shader compile one is the grass density let's go back here so we can make some screen space okay so one is a grass density we can just come here and you can see we have the grass and it's very uniform everything is the same size and we don't want that so we will put something like if we put something like 10 you will have less grass so let's leave it at 100. we can also have the jitter like it can be very uniform or we can randomize it okay the cool distance we're gonna take a look later which is basically from distance uh when it will stop showing up this distance looks fair enough so we will keep it like that also 150 looks like a nicer number here okay the next is one is the scale so the scale if we leave it at uniform we can have the minimum one and maximum of something like 2.3 and minimum maybe 0 0.9 maybe 2.3 is too much or maybe we can reduce this size okay reduce this one too to 50 that's great and for now we will just leave it like that so what else can we do well we can add another asset so instead of adding another element we can duplicate this one and this will of course add more meshes so what i can do here is try my other glass club this will give me like a smaller version which is great so let's add another one duplicate this one and add another grass clamp here uh for example like this one there you go and the grass density of course you can change it for example you don't want this small little plants to show to that much we can change this to almost half okay uh, I find it like I really like them so I will just leave it them like this okay and then the grass density uh, for this one we can change it to 200 for example and it will be very dense or maybe just leave it at 50 and this one we can leave it at 25 for example there you go so now you have some grass going on here that's great and you can align to the surface if it's something that you want and that's it so now what we can do here it's painting areas where we want our grass so we can just go to the landscape and paint the layer 5 grass and just paint here and you will see that i have my grass happening here i can just put the grass here there you go and i can paint like a stronger brush and this will give me like uh harsher results and if i want to remove this i can just paint here and now i don't have any grass here i can just shift click here and now you you see that when i play here now now i have my grass clubs 
No, I can increase them or decrease them uh, based on whatever I want. Uh, so what we can do now is just paint a little bit here, like layer 5 grass. And we can reduce the tool strength and we can just paint here a little bit of this one. And also a little bit of this one. There you go. And we can do the same here. We can paint some grass here. And do the same here. And increase the tool strength so we can have like more results. There you go. And do the same here. Okay. Uh, we can do the same here. And put it there. And basically, basically any area you wish to have your grass here, like for example this area, or I don't know this area too. Like you want glass and. If you want to increase the density, we can just go to our asset we create. Just go to a forest. Okay, let's let's save everything. And now we can change the density, for example, like 50 here. And this will increase the density of our grass. And we can change the size, for example, if we want it to be smaller, we can definitely do that by putting like 1.5 on this one. And this one we can put like 1.1. Uh, to make it even smaller something like that okay and we can increase the density of this one like 100 or maybe we want to increase the density of the other one and we can change the size to something like uh, 1.8 or increase the density also and increase the density of the first one like for example something like 100 you can even put like 300 and that will be a lot so let's just leave it at uh 100 for now because we were gonna add more plants later but it's a really good start so now we can just paint our grass wherever we want and our grass is a little bit uh too short so we're gonna add bigger plants here um we're gonna do that next so before continuing to add more plants, let's fix this super bright color that these plants have. And I don't know why it comes like this, but if you open this material here, uh, you will have some options that you can use. And the one you want to change is the translucency strength. Uh, you want it to set to zero. Okay, so just like that, uh, now our plants behave as normal so why we still see those at the distance is because this one it's the material it's using from distance so we also need to change this one so we're going here to the translucency strength and we're gonna put that to zero again and there you go now it feels much better we can come here and you see that we have our plants now let's add some bigger plants okay so we can go to the bridge and we have another clamp here we could use that but actually what i can do is to add some of this okay so let's add some of the smaller ones first and these are really nice like for example this one okay and this one too these are extremely nice uh plants you can use so you can add a lot of extra detail so we're gonna add them pretty easy we're just going here to the uh, content browser go to my forest and then go to the grass type we create and let's save everything just in case and now what we can do is to create a new element or we can duplicate the one we got so we can just delete this one and maybe duplicate this one and now what we can do is to go here and in these grass plants, we're going to add these ones we just add. So let's add this one, for example. We can put uh, we can put it here. Now you can see that I have my small little plants here. can change the density to like uh, 500. Something like that. Okay. And this size can be like 0 0.5 to 1 or, or 2. Or one I, I don't know uh something like that maybe 250 and we can duplicate this one and let's use another one 
for example, uh, maybe this one. Can put it here. There you go. Now we have another variation here. Um, we can change the density if we put zero. That's how it looks like. We we put five hundred. It would look like this. Um, if you put one thousand, it will be like super small. Uh, which is pretty nice, by the way, but we're not going for that. Uh, let's put uh, 350 here, and then the density for the other class lamps, we're going to put something like 150. Okay, uh, before we continue, let's change the material of this. So, like we did before, we're going to double click on this two times. And for this one, we're going to reduce the translucency. And we're going to do the same for this one. There you go. So now when we take a look at this, everything blends more nicely. So what we can do here is landscape mode, paint. And we can paint here. Let's reduce the size. We can just paint in this area. And you will have like smaller little details that you can put here. And you can do the same here. Like for example, in this area, have a lot of small little plants here. Which is awesome. Okay, so let's close this and let's play the game to see how it feels like. So it's much better. The problem is we don't have any big plants. And from distance, this one's like a little bit funny. So we're gonna take a look at that later, but for now it's for now it's fine. So what we're gonna do is to go to the bridge and let's grab these big ones here. So let's add them into our project. And you can see the, the beach fern here. Let the thumbnails lo download. So we want to add maybe this one. And like always, we're going to reduce the translucency. We don't really want it. At least for our purposes. If you find it like you like it, you can keep it. So let's go back to our landscape grass. Let's just put it here again. And now we're going to come here and maybe put another one. So let's go to the last one. And we're going to come here and then we will duplicate this one. Now we're going to add this one here. Okay, and what you can see is like we have small little ferns here, which is great. Uh, but we want it to be a little bit bigger. So it's like from one to maybe two. Or maybe 1.8. Well, let's take a look at how it feels like. It's still very small, so we're gonna put something like three, and we're gonna reduce the density. We don't want this to be very high. Like we're gonna put like something like 50, so that when we play here, we have some big plants here, but not all of them are big, which is great, right? So you just wanna keep it like that. Awesome. There is another plan I wanna add before. Uh, we finish adding plants here, and it's this one. So we're gonna add here, and this one we're gonna, as always, remove the translucency. Double click on this one, translucency. We're gonna remove it, and now we're gonna duplicate this one. And instead of putting this one, we're gonna put um maybe this one and just put it here and just by doing that we're adding more color to our plants mm. and we can change the size maybe a little bit too big for this so now what we can do is something much more interesting we can go here to the landscape and we can paint here and we can shift click to remove the painting here Something like that. And we can create different paths by using the fall off. We can just come here and, you know, just put it like this. Something like that. That's very unnatural, by the way. So we can just put something like that. And just put the path here. There you go. Something like that. And we can. We, we can be, keep painting plants here where we want. So that's great. Uh, it's adding a lot of detail here. 
especially when you come really close and increase the brush size and maybe paint it here something like that I can do it here too basically any area you want and if you want to change the size of this like let's play here like I feel it's right but for example if you want really big plants we can add another variation here let's go to our landscape grass let's put it here save everything just in case and let's come back here and this time we're gonna add for example like this one and what we will do is to duplicate the last one and let's go here and we will put it here and now what you can do is to put something like four and this will add very big plants we can even go like six or something um that's too big but let's put something like 150 yeah that's a lot so let's just put something like 65 and just by adding this you have like really big plants uh another thing you can do is to add this tall grass if you go to the tall grass uh this one is perfect for breaking the variation we we're trying to break now um go back to the translucency to zero okay and then we can just duplicate this one and we can put this grass here so let's let's put this one for example and now this is really tall grass um so let's put something like three that's much better to put 2.7 maybe that's great we can even duplicate this one and add another variation for example this one we can put it here and just by doing that we're adding a lot of variation if you feel like this one is too big you can go back to 2 or 2.3 i can do the same for this one i can, can just put um like 2.8 if you want so now let's play our game to check how the grass looks like now we have this really big plants and i kind of like them but i find i find like they are very big and there are too many of them so what i will do is to go back here and then go down and here i will put this one to two and this one to uh, 35 okay and for this one uh, we're gonna put this one to 30 so we have less of them and we're gonna put that max size to 2 you can put even like 15 so some of them only not not too much maybe 20 so now when we play now we have some of them but it's not too many which is great I, I, I feel like uh, our game feels much better now so you can feel free to paint any area you want just by using this method we can paint grass anywhere and you can just remove it by using this something like that or you can just paint like this and removing the tool strength and the size to have like a more precise look and then just little by little adding small little plants here just some of them not too many okay and you can keep adding here if you want I can do the same here and that's great so now that we have some plants it's time to add some trees so before we add the trees there is a small little setting I want to show you and that is the color variation so if we go to the materials of our grass clamps uh we can double click on this two times okay so what we can do is to add variation so if you check the color here with l3 you can go to color variation and put something like 0 0.3 and that's the far distance one so we're gonna go back here 0 0.3 and you can see that i have much more variation now that's a lot for me so i think i like 0 0.2 or 
0 0.25. Maybe that's good. 0 0.2. That's much better. So I can do the same for the distance one, 0 0.2. And this will add a lot of color variation here. Okay. We can do the same one for anyone. Like for example, this one. Let's put it here. Double click. And now let's try to play with a color variation. Let's put, if we put one, you will see what happens here. So what we can do is to put something like 0 0.2. Mm. Oh, yeah, 0 0.2 and leave it like that, like 0 0.2 here. Uh, actually, that's a little bit too much. So let's put back to 0 0.1. It's yeah, just zero, leave it, leave, it, leave it like zero. It doesn't deserve this one. So you can just play with a color variation for your plants. And the same can be done with a with this one with the tall grass and this one so i can just come here and this one now a little bit more forbidding so if i can just come here just put one you will see that i have a lot of variation and because it's really small it really doesn't matter so i can just put something like 0 0.1 and do again 0 0.1 for the color variation of this and just like this we have uh, mm -hmm. much more richer colors. So if we play here again, you will see that our landscape has um, a little bit more variation in the colors of the plants, uh, which is great. It's something you want to have. Okay. So uh, now that we have this, let's add some trees. So in order to add some trees, we are going to use the mega scans ones and uh, we won't find them in Breach because the trees are not here. The trees are in Unreal Marketplace. So you just need to find for free mega scans. Then you can find the trees here. And you can just add to project. Okay. And by default, this won't be supported by uh, Unreal Engine 5. However, they do work. Um, so you can add to project. And if you don't see your project, just go here to show all projects. And here you can find your project. So once you have it, you will see a message that this is not compatible. That's okay. Just put 4.26 and add to project. You should be good to go. So I already added. So if I go here to my content browser, you will see that I have a new folder called Black Alder. So basically it has two types, the Pivot Painter, which is the high quality one, and the Simple Wind, which is, uh, you know, the lower quality one. We're going to use the Simple Wind, okay? Uh, although you're free to use whatever you want. So in order to add this, uh, we can just, you know, drag this gear. And just like that, we have a tree. And as you can see, the trees add a lot to our environment. So what we can do is to modify our material so that we can do the same thing we did before but instead of adding the grass we will add trees so we're going here to my forest folder let's save everything and let's go here and go to um foliage and then go to landscape grass type then go to landscape grass type and then type uh trees zero one something like that okay so now that we do this we can put our trees here so let's find one of the trees we want to put for example uh maybe this one we can put it here and let's change the density we don't really want to uh spawn a lot of them at the beginning so just like that we just need to modify our material so we were going here to uh, my forest and if you having a hard time finding your folder just like i am now you can right click set color and we can just put a like a i don't know something blue i don't know light blue and that's it now it's easier to find so we can go here to my landscape okay and now uh we need you know another layer so very easy uh we're going here to create a new layer and this one will be my L6 trees. 
okay so just by doing that you can drag the l1 again because we're going to use the same texture since you're going to see it anyway that really doesn't matter and then we're going here and put a height blend we're going to use the same height one here so now that you have this um what you need to do uh this sample we don't really need it we can just go here and this one will use the l6 trees and make sure you're using the same uh, name you're having here with capital letters and everything otherwise it won't work so here i can just go trees save everything okay and now our landscape will compile and everything should stay the same but now if i go to my landscape and let's save everything if we don't see the another layer we need to get out of here create an empty level open recent levels and that's it and we're good to go we just go to the landscape and now you can see the trees here you can come here create a layer info now let's do a test here we can go to paint and let's say we want to paint here so we're just gonna paint here a little bit and let's see what's happened it's compiling the shaders and tool strength should be very high okay and also this one like maybe 50. okay let that shaders compile first if they don't compile it's because if you don't see anything it's because it hasn't finished compiling so 42 34 20 something Okay. So as I paint this, uh, let's see if it works. Okay. So I don't see my trees. So maybe. Ah, uh, oh, so I need to do another sample here. I can do a sample. Uh, landscape. And now I can have the l6 trees okay now we can just plug this here apply and let's see what happens wow now that's a lot uh we're gonna put this to one okay or maybe two <laughs> and we're gonna also um increase the space between them if i can find a uh, solution here i can just shift paint here this will take care of it so let's shift paint here and let's add some trees here okay so what we can do for example is maybe add some trees here we can just go here and instead these trees won't i wanted to align do not align to the normal so uh, align to surface off and now they will point up if i do this i can just paint my trees here which is great i can also change the size for example something like 0 0.7 and something like 2 or 1.5 okay i can also add more trees so i can just add another element and sorry instead of adding i will delete this one and let's add another tree so let's see if, let's, let's put some uh color here so let's say the color uh this one will be something like green there you go so let's try to add something um maybe like this so let's or maybe this one okay so let's uh add it let's see if we add it no we haven't added it. so let's duplicate this one and now we will change this one here now we have another type of tree um if we put something like five you will see it a lot of so let's put something like five or two okay and then go here uh duplicate let's put another one um maybe this one so let's put it here okay so now we have like a smaller one which is great okay and all these ones are like really close so let's see if we can change the jitter a little bit 
yeah not like that okay so far so good okay so what we're gonna do is to paint them here maybe just like that okay and we can also paint here and also paint here awesome and we can also paint here and let's remove this to see uh like to see what what can we do with this so like this one is like really close to each other i don't really want that but we can we can change it okay and this part of my maybe so i want some trees here okay and here on the on the distance we want some other trees to block the path so uh, trees are a good way to block the path from the player like you don't want them to see what's going on there very easy just put some trees and also here okay you can just paint here if you don't want any tree in particular and now that you have this let's just play with our game to see how it looks like so let's all p and look at that now we have uh, a lot of trees uh, it's a little bit laggy you know 10 fps is the new 60 fps so uh we're gonna optimize this later uh for now i'm just gonna paint a little bit more so i i'm just gonna paint here a little bit okay um just paint here in the corners and also like here for example and, uh, add some of them here and that's it uh, what you can do is to basically change the tree if you want so if you go here and go to your trees if you want another type of tree you can for example um, maybe try the number four and this will give you a completely different result from what you had before okay and you know that cooling distance uh, it's something that uh, we will work in later uh, for now we will just leave it like that if, if you like this tree you can leave it otherwise you can just leave the number seven okay which i i feel it's better and you can keep adding you know you can you can keep adding uh smaller elements because the trees also need smaller elements so for example i can add something like um like this for example i can just put it here and i will just put something like 100 or 50 and now i can just go here and change the scale for example from 0 0.7 to 1.7 to have a more variation okay awesome and i can have something like 20. that's great so now we have some smaller plants surrounding our trees uh which is great by the way so let's save this save everything and let's play our game okay so now we are playing and you can see that our forest feels a lot more alive uh, i feel like the color variation is a little bit too intense here so we're gonna change it later and now these trees help a lot like they really do so the next thing we're gonna do is to uh increase the performance of our of our game and take care of the clipping like if we play here you will see that our trees at the distance we don't really see them um that's a problem so let's let, let's deal with that so like i said 10 fps is the new 60 fps but we can do something about it uh we can increase the performance of these trees by reducing the poly count so if we take a look at this uh, grass type we create if we double click on this you will see that the minimum lod is one and they did this on purpose because they don't want to add a lot of detail to this so i don't feel like we'll notice the difference between lod 4 and lod 1 for me at least so if i go here to my lod i can just type put 4 and for me it's like pretty decent so uh i'm gonna 
keep it on LOD4. So how do we do this? We just need to scroll this. And by the way, this is our static mesh editor where we can uh, view our 3D meshes. So let's go to the LOD settings. And you see that this simple win comes with minimum LOD1. If we put zero, you will see that it has a lot of detail. Um, we don't really want that. So our minimum LOD will be four. Let's save this. And now we have increased our FPS a little bit. If you don't see this, uh, you can also show FPS here. And you will see that I have like 30 something between 20 and 30 something. So let's start fixing it. Let's go back here. And this one. Also, I'm going to put a, I'm going to type minimum. LOD will be four. And I, I won't be able to notice the difference. I'm going to do the same here. So let's see how far you can go. So, so how many LODs this one has? It only has three, actually. And let's see how it looks with three. We put three. Actually, it looks pretty good. So we're going to keep it in three. So minimum LOD will be three. All right. That's awesome. Let's keep moving. This is our number uh, four. So this one, uh, let's see how it looks like from close distance. LOD three. LOD 2. I don't see much difference. Uh, so I'm going to go for LOD 3 for this one. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save everything. Now you can see my my FPS still uh, a little bit like funky. So uh, also what I need to do is to go to cool distance. And here I play with the settings a little bit. If I put like 10,000, which is what I had before. You will see that as I move away, my trees also fade away, which is great for performance. Uh, but these trees come with a imposter card. So I, if I can put something like for 40,000 to all of them. Now I can see more uh, my trees more often okay um that's great uh that's great that's that's what we want so another thing that is hurting our performance it's uh uh texture resolution uh these plants come very with a very high density texture so we can change those so we can come here and then go to max maximum texture size okay and we can change this one to uh, maybe 124. We don't need more than that. Okay. And let's save it. And the problem is when you want to do it for a lot of texture. So you can come here and right click, then go to asset actions, and then bulk edit property matrix. Okay. And there you will see that you have all of those. So you can put max maximum texture resolution uh you can put all of this to 124 and just like that just you just modify everything so max in game one to one 1024 that's great let's save everything okay just take a little bit okay great the next one uh, will be this one. So let's go back here. Asset actions, bulk edit, uh, maximum texture resolution, 124. Uh, close this. Close everything. Okay. Then go to the grass. And you really don't need much resolution for this one. Uh, because those are really small assets. And to be honest, 4K, it's a lot. Uh, you won't see it. So let's go here. Maximum resolution, 124. And then do the same here. Especially this one. This one can even be like 212. So let's 
let's try to put 212 for this one uh 212. so by optimizing the textures you can actually see that our performance is much better than before uh we still have some texture resolution budget and that is because we still have a lot of this uh maybe we're gonna put virtual textures later but for now uh, we're gonna leave it like this uh, this will be our optimized scene for now and then we're gonna keep decorating our level so let's remove these stats uh, i don't want to to show the fps okay so it's a little bit better uh, we still have the streaming pool here we can uh, remove it later but for now uh, i think this is fairly acceptable so one trick we can do to sell the environment is to play with the scale and we already have a good scale here which is this tree so we're gonna come here and we're gonna go to my forest actually here let's remove this and let's find this and what we will do is to drag this here but instead of putting it here we're gonna put it here it's like this okay and what you can do here is basically make it smaller something like 0 0.5 and you can do the same here and rotate around making it bigger and here also and this one can be like 0 0.3 okay and just by doing that you see that our mountain feels much bigger and we can even make it smaller like 0 0.4 and this one also like 0 0.3 something like that and now you will see that if your brain relates this as a let's say this is like i don't know five meters and this is the same tree it means that's also five meters but it's not it's much smaller but this is how we can trick the brain to sell the idea that we are actually uh you know having something uh much bigger than what it actually is this is fairly common in games you can come here and just leave it like this okay let's Oh, by the way, let's come here. By the way, if you want to save a camera, just press, like, for example, uh, from here. Let's just press Control 1. And if you move around, let's say uh, you want to move this thing around. It's like this. And I'm going to put it here, too. Rotate it a little bit. There you go. Something like that. So, let's just say you want to go to the same spot you were before you can just press one and you will go automatically so let's do the same let's put the same tree here uh let's put it here and let's put something like 0 0.6 or 0 0.5 and let's, let's just move it here okay what you can actually do is to paint here the the trees if you want you can go to uh, foliage and you can find your tree here uh, if you don't see it you can just come here and then add this to our foliage type and here we can just paint here now this is a little bit too much so let's reduce the paint density and also the density here uh, be like 10 maybe okay that's great now we're gonna change the size to 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 Okay, and the C offset will be like minus 5, maybe. Okay, and now we can just paint here. Now, from distance, you won't be able to see it because of the cooling distance, perhaps. No, it still works. So, you can just paint here. And that's great. You still have your imposter syndrome here. And you can do the same here. You can start painting trees crazily from distance and... Uh, this will feel like uh, you're actually having a bigger scene. Let's do the same here. Let's see if we're actually going to see it. So let's paint a tree here. Looks like we cannot even see it. So it really doesn't matter from this distance. 
uh, you only want to do it here something like that and with this you have your imposter cards there you can do the same here I'll do the same here actually and just like this we can sell the idea that we actually have uh, you know bigger trees than what you actually thought we had with this one we're gonna move it uh, let's remove the align to normal just like that and then here we can also paint a little bit I have to have some trees in the in the distance uh, let's just leave it like that for now so um, that's a good way to trick the eye that you actually have things in the distance like for example there I think it works quite well from distance um, you know a little bit low poly but from this angle uh, you won't really notice especially if you are making a game you you will have a lot of elements there to distract the player they won't be able to notice the small little details so that's a great way to decorate your environment using trees so the next thing we're gonna do um, is to keep adding more detail to our scene so before continuing to decorate our environment it's a good idea to play with the lining so one of the things we can do first is go to our exponential height fog which we had at the beginning and if you don't have it make sure to go here to visual effects and exponential height fog and you can just drag and drop this okay so here in the exponential height fog there is a very important setting i want you to click here and if you scroll down you will see here the volumetric fog so as i click here you will see that uh, everything starts changing because it's it's like the fog is having like a 3d effect uh which is being applied so it can have this more sense of depth and just by doing that we already have a lot of going on here we can play with the fog here for example something like this and of course if we play you will see uh, where it can be applied so for example from this camera we can add a second fog data and it will make everything really foggy okay there's also color you can put here uh, if you really wanted to uh, I feel like uh, we really don't need it uh, we are gonna just leave it like that okay the albedo of course it's like the color of the of the fog and one important setting you can play with is the scattering distribution so you can put a lot or a little okay and also the distinction scale like maybe you want to put a lot uh, and, and fog can really help you sell your scene if i remove it you will see that i lack some depth and as soon as i put it you will see that my scene has a lot more depth compared to before and that's a good thing so another thing we can do is to play with our directional light so if we go here to the lead mode on the top left we can go to detail lining and you will see that i have my lining here and i can go here and if i press e i can rotate around the lining so something like this for example uh, but um what i really want to do is to instead of using these controls here uh, I will come here with Control L, and while holding Control L, I'm moving the mouse. You see that I'm having like a different lining setting here, which is great. Okay, and just by doing this, we're having like a really nice um, uh, sunset going on, uh, which is great. And the fog is following the color of our current temperature of the light. So if we come here and just come back here and what I'm looking for it's these shadows here that are really interesting that are being created ten, being created thanks to our trees here so I want to have like a interesting balance between the shadows we create and the lights we have this looks like an interesting uh, setup so I'm gonna copy this in uh, just by right clicking here you can click copy I let me just Play with it a little bit we can just go back to ctrl l or we can play with another setting for example something like this and we can have different setups 
can go here, something like this. Very cool. Can play with the lining from another direction. So I feel like the setup we had before was the best. I'm gonna paste this to come back to what we had before. Um, so, and then we're gonna play with this a little bit, just like this. Just like just like that. Okay, so let's come back and you can put something like that. Okay, and also we can we can just move it around until we have like something like really nice lighting. Something like this. This is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm gonna copy this just in case. So what else we can do? Well we can change the temperature. For example, we want to make it cooler or we want to make it uh warmer. That really depends on you, what you're looking for. Like this is super warm and this is super cool. And those are valid options. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going for a warmer uh, tone here, like, like something like this. Okay. You also have the indirect lightning intensity. Uh, let me crank this up to crank this up to 50. You will see that all my colors are being like uh, propagated across the um across the map if i put zero there is no lining intensity if i put like something like five you will see that everything gets the color of everything like if there is a green rock here uh you will see that you know this rock will also uh the green will bounce here and everything will be more greenish okay so what else we can do well um we can change the intensity of course like something like 3.14 for example if you want it less, uh, I like it like 10. We can, of course, crank it up if you want. Um, not a really a big deal here. The light color, of course, this will affect a lot of things. Uh, usually, uh, if you want to be more accurate, the lights are usually warm. They're not completely white, but they have a slight, a slight tint of uh, yellowish. Not like this, of course, but just a tiny bit, just like this, okay? And just like that, um, we have like different lining. We can go to the light shaft too. There is a section called light shaft and we can call light shaft occlusion. And you will see that everything turns like uh, nice shadows here at the distance, which is great. I, I like it. We can decrease the darkness or just leave it like that. And also the occlusion depth. Okay, I find that the default settings work the best for me. And also we have the light shaft bloom. So if we do this, you will see that we have some bloom going on here, uh, which is great. Um, I don't know if you like it. Uh, for me, I want to put a threshold like this and I can also remove the bloom scale. Okay, and something like that. If you really want to make it evident, press Ctrl L to move the light and you will see that this god race comes from here, okay? So I'm just gonna leave it here. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to keep the bloom, okay? So what you can do is to do the bloom thing. You can put something like yellowish to match the, the sun. Uh, but I feel like I don't want it. If you want it, you can leave it there. All right, so uh, this is it for the directional light. The next thing we're going to do is to play with the post-processing. So a great way to add more details to our scene is to add more post-processing. So how do we do this? We need to come here to the Place tab and then go to Visual Effects and then, sorry, go to Volumes and then find the post-process volume. You can drag it here. And basically this will work uh, when I step in here. So let me make this bigger. Okay, so let's just say it's here. And what I want to do is search here and look for saturation. Go here and change this. So as I come here, you will see that everything turns dark. So let's play our game. So if we come here and as we step into this one, then everything turns like uh, black and white. Okay, uh, that's great. 
for gameplay purposes because you can have different areas with different post process but for us what we want to do is to add a global post process so instead uh, there are a bunch of options here uh, a lot of them actually so i'm just gonna show you uh, what you can type to find it type unbound and you will see that infinite extent will give you what you want it's a uh, everything will turn into grayscale now now let's change the settings a little bit um let's go back to the global one so let's press the saturation for the saturation um usually a good rule of thumb is to play uh, with the values but do not go too far like you don't want to put two here like if you want to make it less saturated you can put one or 1 1.1 or 1.02 to make it a little bit different for the contrast you can reduce the contrast if you want to make it like more real uh one or 0 0.8 0 0.7 if you put like two it will become like the more contrast you have the more fantasy feelings you have so you can put something like 0 0.96 something like that okay uh the gamma also affects a little bit like how, how black it is or how white i find it like these settings are the most um, impactful ones so then let's just go to the shadows you can have like a slight tint of bluish into the shadows here so if i do this uh the shadows will help a little bit okay i can also put something like two so the shadows will be more saturated i can also increase the contrast of the shadows you can see here that in this area that everything turns like black okay so uh, let's continue uh these ones of course will change like the mid tones and the highlights for example the highlights uh you can increase the saturation or decrease it uh that really depends on you or you can put the highlights like a little bit bluish uh, sorry go here go to the green one there here the reddish okay something like that and you can play with it okay so let's just leave it at one let's just not touch this so the film slope if i go here uh i can just change this this will actually increase the contrast then here just like that okay uh, with the toe also will increase or decrease the contrast depends that really depends on what you're looking for i find like 0. Uh, 0. 0.58 is a good number uh, or 0. 0.565 just a little bit of contrast but not too much or you can just leave it like that too this will also increase the contrast or decrease it so uh, be aware of it Okay, so the global illumination, we won't touch this one, lumen and ray tracing. Uh, we're then going uh, the film gray. The film gray can help a little bit. Like you can see everything turns like rainy uh, and that's great. So you can go here and change the intensity here. Uh, for example, the textile size, if we make it really big it's gonna be super big so just gonna make it really small on this one just a tiny bit just enough so that there is uh something going on here okay uh the next one it's of course the bloom uh that really depends on you if you want to put the bloom everything will look like more fantasy um it's like you are in a dream or something uh we're gonna leave it like that we're not gonna touch the bloom the exposure uh, you can change the exposure of course and it will change the lightness it's like that if you're familiar with uh, professional cameras the exposure can really affect the lining of your environment so here you can change the mean and max brightness uh, by default if I play here uh, the exposure will adjust to my view so as I look here for example uh, I didn't put collations on this one but uh, if I look to a place where everything is very dark and then I go up, uh, I, I will, uh, my eye uh, will try to adapt to the lining. So I can play with um, something like 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. That's too much, like 0 
or maybe 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 okay that's still too much so 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 here and then not the eye adaptation won't uh you know it it won't uh, be uh, affected so i can i can put something me play with the values a little bit so i can put 0 0.1 here or 0. Point, uh, i can put one okay and the max brightness i can just leave it at eight and the minimum brightness i can put as i increase this value it becomes darker and darker so that really will depend on what you want okay uh i cannot like it like this but i want to show you just in case you want to uh, change everything uh chromatic aberration of course this is like really nice and to put a little bit and the start offset you can change it so for this one i just want to just a tiny bit you don't want to put it like this you just want to put a little bit like this to distort the image just a tiny bit like without it with it like very nice okay um and that's it uh the next is one the, the lens flares but um I feel like they're not really necessary, at least for now. And the next is, this one is the depth of field, but we're not gonna we're not gonna use it. We can just change these values until we have like a uh, to change like something like this. Like everything becomes really blurry, so you can multiply by ten, um, by ten again. Let's try to play with the values a little bit. So like this, uh, at the distance, it will become a little bit more blurry. We're going to touch that. And that's it. So now that we have this, uh, we have a good idea of, um, you know, uh, how our environment feeling uh, feels like. And one last thing before I finish, the, you can change the temperature. Like For example, you can put it like cooler or warmer. And you can see that there is a, big difference so uh, I find like leaving this value like this it's okay and you can change to make it more green like or more purple whatever you choose make sure you just put that sl uh, small little values here you don't want to change it that much okay so that's it um, now that we have our lining let's start decorating our environment because we got we like a lot of details we have like a good uh, first pass but we still need to add more assets okay so let's keep decorating our map uh, I find like this broadleaf forest has a lot of interesting things to put uh, so I'm just gonna grab the high quality I really don't feel like I need the nanite version so I can just grab this one here and put it in position put it like this something like that Okay, and then I can continue to do the same with this one, for example, like this. Um, I feel like this one uh, can be used for like painting in the foliage editor. So I could do that. Uh, we will take a look at that layer when this one finish. Uh, we also have some kind of rocks here. We can drag this one, for example. Um, we can put it here. There you go. Try to put it in position. Just like that. And we can do the same here. Like we can we can add another rock. We can increase the size. Rotate this. And basically we can keep adding rocks and stuff. Um example like this one I, I feel like this one is the nanny version already we have it so like this one for example we can uh, we can grab this one to the high quality version there you go so this one we could put it like here for example we can go here just like that so we have like more rocks going on here and we can do the same here um 
like for example here we could uh, put the same rock here but let's rotate it a little bit and we can try to put it here okay here we can we can have some rocks too so let's see which one we can put uh this one looks like a nice one so let's just grab this let's save everything just in case remember our old incident here and just by putting this here you see that uh, it's adding a lot more believability to our scene okay so something something like this you don't want to you can you can always rotate and nobody will notice okay and let's take a look at other ones like for example this one the mossy forest rock they all come with ground and i find it a little bit annoying to be honest but they're quite nice uh, for some cases you can put this one here and also like here we can put another one on this time we can rotate it around and we're gonna just focus on one area of our environment we're not really gonna do all of it okay uh what else we can put um so this one is ready so what i will do is to go to my mega scans uh 3d assets and there should be something called like tree branch there you go so what i will do is go here to the select mode go to foliage and instead of painting anything here i will just come here and drag this okay and i will only check this one so so i can just paint here like this okay let me increase the uh we can increase the radius between those ones and the density we can also increase it i just like that can increase the paint density here okay and also what what we can do is to change the size of this uh so for example uh one is the highest one and 2.3 uh, sorry the minimum is one and the 2.3 is the, the other one so we can put it here something like that I'm, at this point you don't really want to be that big you only want to have some small uh like little pebbles like for example this kind of rock uh we can easily download this uh or maybe this one and we can scatter this across our you know our environment so let me go here to select mode and this one we can come here again and just make it bigger just like this and we can just we can just put it here like just like that and it's the same rock and if we rotate it a little bit uh, no one will notice actually so that's that's the good thing and we can do the same thing here let's let's grab another rock um i believe i found a nice one here there you go so we can just come here and this is not the nanite version uh you could download the nanite for my purposes i feel like this is enough uh but feel free to download the highest quality if you feel like you have enough space in your hard drive then go for it for me i only have one gigabyte and that's not enough so you can just come here there you go and here make sure you don't there you go something like this much better uh, we can do the same here this part looks a little bit empty so we can come here there you go something like that and you don't want to clip clip it too much something something like that and we can we can do the same here uh, let's rotate the rock so nobody will notice that it's the same one uh, we can just put it here and now that this one is ready let's add it and let's see what's the name for its boulder it should be this one now this one okay so this one is ready 
So what we will do is, uh, of course, let's enable the nanite. Uh, okay, and then uh, actually you should enable nanite uh, anytime possible where wherever you have opaque surfaces. So let's go here to the polish tool, and now let's go here. Uh, there you go. And now uh, I'm not going to paint this one. I'm just going to paint my stones. And the density will be the same, but this one will be like between 1 and 2. Uh, that's too big. So let's put it like 0 0.5 and 1. That's also too big. And this also change the radius like 0 0.1 so that they don't intersect. Okay, let's let's go lower. I told you we don't really need a night version for this one. Let's go even lower, like 0 0.1 and 0 0.25 or 0 0.05. Okay, that's much better. So what we can do here is just paint here the rocks. And this will, this will add a lot of believability to your thing. I can put something like 0 0.5. Uh, maybe not 0 0.5, 0 0.3. There you go. Like some rocks here and there. I can paint it here too. Something like that. And you can combine this with uh, with the tree branches here. So you can just um, uh, decrease the density of this one. I feel like this is too much. So let's put the light 25. Something like that. Okay. Uh, we can continue to add more and more rocks. Um, for example, we can add um, I like this one. I already have some of them downloaded, I guess. So I might just go for this or just some things we can put in the ground. For example, like uh, like this one, we can just drag this and place it here. And this kind of mesh is great for blending the environment. Like for example, here you can just you can just put it in this area and blend it with the rock here, so it's not like the rock floating, just like that. And now we we can do the same here, like you can make it bigger. Now here you can just put it put something like this, or you can just put it here to break the uh, the uniformity of these plants. And we can do the same here. For example, um, we already have some meshes here, so we can just maybe um, like drag this one and if it's the first time you put it, it's gonna take a while. Let's just wait a little bit. Okay, there you go. So for this one, we can just come here and just put it here in position. Something like that. And also, uh, if you don't see the material, maybe it's loading or it doesn't have anything. So what you should do is to come here, open the static mesh editor, click on the material, and put it here and looks looks like this material is not set up correctly so we're gonna open the textures and yes like we imagine we can just open the material and here there's no texture so we're gonna put the albedo here we're gonna put the, the normal here or we're gonna put the roughness here there you go and now it's working okay and this one is the nanite version so you can you can have more here for example like here for, so like a nice place to put it i'm not sure if we're gonna watch it from this distance but you get the idea can just rotate around play a little bit with it 
and just like this you have like a nice blending and i feel like this rocks are a little a little bit um annoying so i'm just going to the foliage too i'm going here and just with holding shift i can delete some of them there you go much better so what i can do here is put a rock um nice nice rock we can we can have for our environment so let's just try to find one maybe yeah, maybe that this this is a classic let's just just put it here and that's much better okay and we can do the same for this we can just put it here and we can combine those meshes so that they are kind of like you know they feel like they are connected and we can also duplicate this one and make it smaller so we can have like smaller versions of this rock just like this and then we can paint here with our foliage tool can paint a little bit of rocks here there you go and this is uh, much more interesting than just the rock uh sitting on here so let's close this And now we we'll, now we have something. Uh, let's try to play our game to see how it feels like. And yeah, so this is how you decorate your environment. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is to add. Uh, you see, there are a lot of rocks here. This is why you need to play the game. If you see it from this distance, it's like ah, it's fine. Uh, let's just shift click. You don't want that much of them yeah you don't want that many and you just put here a little bit but do not overdo it okay and also the the branches uh what i like i like for example like this kind of meshes uh we can put like a a tree here let's just find a tree and there are some nice trees here that you can use uh there is particularly one that i really like it's like chopped down and i think you, you can see it in all the mega scans uh environments that they make yeah something like this so you can just save everything and then here we're gonna we're gonna drag this now we can we can put it here something like that and you don't really want to put it like a anywhere you want to put it in a place where it uh it helps your composition so for example if i put it here it doesn't help at all so i, I want to make sure i put it in a place where i'm not gonna it's not gonna block my you know uh my composition where you know you don't want to block the path you can put it here for example or you can rotate it a little bit and that's better you can put it like that and you can put more of them if you want like here and make a bigger one something like that okay so now uh if we save this and we play let's take a look at this uh so this is much better i kind of like it so the next thing we're gonna do is to add some collision to our meshes and and we will be good to go we have a small environment we can play with and it is very easy i mean this took me around two hours or something but that's because i'm teaching you uh otherwise it should take me like uh half of it or maybe even less okay so 
that's great so if you want to decorate that area uh, of course it will take more time for us uh this is it let's add some collision to our meshes so if we play our game you will see that i have a uh, annoying red message on the top left corner that says texture streaming budget it's over 300 megabytes and depending on where i look at it will be more or less so uh, there are a bunch of ways to fix this but since we're focusing on making a game uh, the best way to deal with texture streaming uh, is by using virtual textures so uh, what we need to do is to go to the project settings okay so go to project settings here then type virtual textures okay so this will be enable build virtual texture support click here and once you click here it will ask you to restart uh I already did it so we don't i don't need to restart again so just like that uh you have virtual textures in the in your project but however there is still um some things we need to fix and that is these textures are not using virtual textures so the way we're gonna fix this is we're going here to our mega scans okay and here if you see here in the the filter uh, icon here we can go to textures okay and basically what we can do is to select all of them okay just like this and right click and then convert to virtual texture so this is gonna take a while and i'm gonna stop the video and continue when it's finished uh but the thing is uh let, let, let's just finish first okay uh, it will ask you to fix some dependencies especially for the materials because the materials are not using the virtual texture sample and we need to add it so uh, just click OK and now it will convert everything so I will come back when this is finished okay so our virtual textures are done and there's a small little problem here if we go to our level one here uh, you will see that everything works just as normal nothing has changed but the problem is the foliage mode uh, it's not rendering correctly there is an issue in the material and we can fix it very easily you can just go to the 3d plants here and let's just open any you know uh, any material you will see that sample and virtual texture is not currently supported to the opacity mask and the opacity mask is used in this texture if we double click on this you will open it and this is my opacity mask if i check the red channel uh looks like this one is the opacity mask uh this one has a bunch of other masks and so we can fix this we can just go here and this is where the opacity mask is happening and you can see that the opacity mask material attribute is not supported currently with virtual texturing which is a pity but it is what it is so what we need to do is to change this texture this texture is used across multiple materials if you come here and right click and then go to the reference viewer you will see that this texture is using is being used in a lot of materials and we don't really want to change this texture so we don't want to convert this to regular texture otherwise um, we're just gonna uh, mess up the other material so what we will do is to right click and duplicate and we will call it white placeholder uh, foliage okay and now with this we can just right click and convert to regular texture hit ok and if nothing happens here make sure you go here to search virtual texturing click off save and now you're good to go now with this one you can just go here and plug it in here and now half of the problem is solved uh the other half of the problem are the textures itself uh you can see that uh we're having some issues here and the reason is this one is a virtual texture and you know that 
in some shape or form it works uh, but it is better to change these textures to a regular one so what you can do here is go to your 3d plans and if you click the filter to texture remember you can always go to the filter and type whatever filter you want you will see that the texture with underscore ART is using virtual texturing. So what we can do is underscore ART to filter all the textures that are using the opacity mask and come back here, select all of them and right click and convert to regular texture. It will search for something that a material that is using these textures, hit OK. OK. And this one, if they don't change, remember, you can always go here to virtual texturing, click off. Okay. And then go here to virtual texturing. There you go. Click off. And now it should be work as expected. Awesome. So from distance, it looks like nothing has changed. And the reason is uh, we only changed the big material. So let's change the other material. Okay, so after saving my textures, I just need to go to my 3D plans. And this time I'm going to click on this one, which is my distance material, which apparently it is different. So uh, it is using this one. So what we need to do here is to make sure that this one is not using a virtual texture uh, here. And why this one is using it is because we're using this white placeholder and we should be using this one. So we can just go here and put it here, linear color, click apply, and this should be good to go. The same can be done for the other material. If we go to our plants, Go to this one, make sure that this one is using, you know, this material and this is the billboard. So everything it's okay. So now, now our LODs are working just fine. Now looks like nothing has happened. Um, but when we play our game and let me save everything first. Uh, when we play our game, you won't be able to see the texture streaming pull. So let's go back here, play. And look at that. We don't have any message anymore. And our game uh, will, rule, will run smoothly because we're using virtual textures. So uh, I'm still above 30 FPS, which is uh, pretty good to me. Um, it's not a fighting game or anything. So... Uh, a good way to check the textures, uh, if you go here to the documentation in Unreal Engine, if you go to Streaming Virtual Textures, you will see that you can have a command called RBT Borders. Okay, so if we take a look at this and press the tilde key to enter the console command R dot, and then let's go to BT dot borders and you will see that as i put one let's let's see here let's click play okay you will see that i have some grid going on here and the closer i am to the grid it becomes white and the the further away i am it becomes like fades to yellow you know the big uh there are just some uh big bigger squares and then goes to green and it happens across all our our materials so uh by using this uh in a way virtual textures uh were the inspiration to create nanite by uh virtual geometry uh so I highly recommend you to use virtual textures for your projects. So if you want to stop visualizing this, uh, apparently you need to put the R, BT, borders, and then go to zero. And if they don't uh, 
if they still show up, uh, we need to um, restart the editor, which I'm going to do that. Okay, so one thing I want to do before wrapping this project, uh, because we're focusing on creating a game, we need to add collisions. And it's very easy, actually. So you can see that my character can go through this. And if I go here, uh, maybe this one doesn't have, yeah. Um, this really breaks the immersion. I'm making collisions in a real engine is extremely easy. So I can just go to the content browser and go to the assets. Okay. And here I can just, for example, go to this one. And then if you don't see this complex decomposition uh, window, you can go to collision and then go to auto convex collision and just the default settings will do the job. So I can just go here to all my meshes to apply collision just one by one apply and you as you can see it's, it's really 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 easy you can just go through this and this is the part of game development that not many people tell you it's usually very repetitive a lot of tasks in game development you will find that they they are repetitive and some things we can automate, some things we cannot. Uh, I believe there is a way to batch the auto convex collision for this ones. Um, for me, uh, I don't feel like I I need it. It's just a few assets we have. I can just go back to this one, hit apply. And we're almost finished with this. As you can see, the less assets you have, the less work you will have to, um, you'll have less work in the future, uh, less things to worry about. So uh, be aware every time you add an asset, make sure that your you have assets that you can reuse as much as you can. Otherwise, it's gonna be like um, a little bit annoying to, uh, you know content curate uh, all these assets and this is just a collision imagine if you were uh, trying to you know uh, make some other changes uh, the less assets you have the more it is uh, the the better it is for you because if you, it's better to have a one high quality asset that you can reuse uh, over and over than having a bunch of low quality ones that you need to put many of them and um, that's not really a good thing so uh when you save uh it will take a while so i will pause the video and i will come back when it's finished okay so that collision uh, is saved uh actually you don't need to save it to try it out but uh for me uh, i don't want to for the foliage types i don't really want to put any collision but for this ones, it's nice that you need to jump here if you encounter any obstacle. Let's take a look at this one. Also, it works. Also, this one, you can jump here. It really does a really nice work. So, uh, this is it for our um, environment creation tutorial for games. I hope you can create your own forest if you have it then uh, feel free to, to share it in the Discord. Uh, we love to see the uh, what people create with what the tutorials we make. And um, of course, uh, try to apply these things to create your own environment. We, we touch about uh, materials, landscape, set dressing. Uh, make sure to play with the foliage tools. They are amazing uh, with the landscape tools combined with the foliage types. You can create forests really, really, really fast and procedurally. So with this, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you don't want to miss more content like this one. If you are the type of person who wants to learn more and take your game dev skills to the next level, check the links in the description. You can become a member or visit our website to check some awesome premium resources. I am Mao and I will see you in the next one.